Faro Machine Foundry and Machine Company was founded by Crispin Ogilby in either 1902 or 1903 in Cleveland, Ohio. Crispin Ogilby was an entrepreneur by this point in time. He also ran Hoffman Hinge and Foundry LTD. Faro expanded rapidly, building all kinds of engines for cars, trucks, tractors, marine application, industrial application, freestanding engines to power farm equipment, building all kinds of different cylinder configurations as the years went on. In 1914, Cadillac would introduce a V8, which would ignite a powder keg in the automotive industry. Companies all over would start offering V8s. Companies like Cole, Apperson, Will St. Clair, King, Perkins, Buddha, Chevrolet, and I'm sure there's others. The goal is to cover them all because this was the beginning of the V8. And it's interesting that it didn't catch on at first. It took until 1955 to stay and become the engine staple it was for decades. Pharaoh would get in the V8 game in 1915. They offered three versions. And what's really interesting about this engine is it's an American design. It didn't copy or adapt anything. And in my opinion, it's years ahead of its time and is a work of art within itself designed by Alson P. Brush of Brush Engineering Association in Detroit. The Faro V8 was a monoblock design cast with both sets of cylinders and the upper part of the crankcase as a single casting. There aren't any studs or bolts connecting the cylinders to the crankcase. The crankshaft and camshaft are tied to the cylinder block. The lower part of the crankcase is pressed steel and acts as an oil pan. Servicing this engine doesn't require any special tools. The combustion chamber is cylindrical in shape and all surfaces are machined. The valves were an overhead valve arrangement and this might be the very first overhead valve v8 offered in america built in numbers the overhead valve setup did not use cages push rods ran outside the engine block in the valley detachable cylinder heads this engine used a single camshaft with 16 cams driven by a pair of large helical gears directly from the crankshaft one cam for each valve which eliminated the valve levers Roller cam followers were used instead. It was stated with the 16 cam engine could be timed like a four cylinder. Heads are held on with eight bolts, four bolts on each side. Intake manifold and water outlet pipe are combined in a single aluminum casting. These engines used a thermo siphoning system for cooling. The intake passages being inside the water passage, which ensured good vaporization. The walls of the manifold are always at a high temperature when the engine's running, of course. The manifold slope from the center towards both the blocks of the liquid fuel carried by the updraft carburetor located in the valley between the two blocks of cylinders doesn't collect but flows into the cylinders. Exhaust pipes are located on the outside of the castings, three outlets per cylinder. Individual outlets on the end ones and one outlet for each center cylinders. Pistons are fitted with three rings, two near the top that hold compression, and a larger ring around the wrist pin, which is double acting to retain the wrist pin and prevent scoring of the cylinders. Forked connecting rods, one connecting rod bearing for two connecting rods. The crankshaft rides on three main bearings, both the main bearings and the crankshaft itself is made of phosphorus bronze. Lubrication is force fed from the gear pump in the front of the engine, which draws oil from the bottom of the crankcase and forces it through four oil leads to the main bearings and then it gets distributed throughout the engine. Spark plug location was also in the V Valley between the banks of cylinders. The V8 was offered in three configurations, 162 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 2.655 liters. It was good for 35 horsepower, around 2,500 RPM with an estimated 83 pound-feet or 
112 newton meters around 1800 rpm with a bore of 2.65 inches and a stroke of 3.75 inches this engine weighed 360 pounds years this engine was used was between the years of 1915 through 1919 it could be found in the scripps booth from 1917 in the model d or in the scripps booth 1918 model h Next up was the 198 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 3.2 liters. It was good for 48 horsepower around 2500 RPM with an estimated 110 pound feet or 149 newton meters around 1800 RPM with a bore of 3 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. This engine weighed 428 pounds. Years this engine was used between 1915 through 1919. It could be found in the 1916 Bisco as well as the Jackson Wolverine from 1917 through 1918. The biggest V8 Faro ever made was 265 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 4.3 liters. It's important to note that information on this version is very limited and it's different than the other two. 60 horsepower, 2500 RPM with an estimated 135 pound feet or 183 newton meters around 1800 rpm with a bore of 3.25 inches and a stroke of 4 inches the engine weighed 487 pounds with the success of their v8 faro would build a v12 cast the same way as the v8 cylinder blocks and top of the crankcase as one single casting pistons were grouped in three and what looks to be water passages between the groups of three cylinders information and cars or application of this engine is very sparse so if anybody has any information can you please fill in the gaps in the comment section below it's super interesting concept nonetheless the 12 also utilized overhead valve exhaust manifolds are on the outside of the motor valve tappet adjustment at the top of the cylinder head just like on the v8 the v12 design also used cams to open and close the valves there wasn't any rocker arms between the cam and used roller valve lifters the crankshaft is perfectly counterbalanced full pressure feed lubricated 350 cubic inch displacement overhead valve v12 5.7 liters it was good for 80 horsepower around 2500 rpm with an estimated 175 pound feet or 237 newton meters around 1800 rpm with a bore of 2.875 inches and a stroke of 4.5 inches compression was 10.1 to 1 this engine weighed about 730 pounds years this engine was produced was between 1916 through 1919 i couldn't find any application that it was used for if you know what this engine was in can you please put it in the comments section because it's a total head scratcher unfortunately Faro would end up going bankrupt in 1919 and these engines would unfortunately get lost to time am i the only one that is amazed at these concepts that they existed back in 1915 and they didn't really get copied the overhead valve didn't really become a staple until the mid 1950s it's all super interesting when you look back at all the different ideas that never really caught on or took forever to catch on huge thank you to the aaca library for making this episode possible and i kid you not if you're looking for lost and forgotten information they probably have it and they should be your first stop when looking for information get this you don't have to be an aaca member to go there i will link their address in the description better yet up on the screen there's their address this is what the place looks like it's absolutely amazing there the staff that works there are super knowledgeable about where the information is it's a place of wealth of forgotten or unknown knowledge paint col colors wiring diagrams anything that you can think of that pertains to the automobile can be found at the aaca library in hershey pennsylvania but the bigger question is, is which one would you rather have 1917 jackson wolverine or 1916 scripps booth or 1916 bisco i'm going to leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it today. We'll have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. 
or shoot me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. If you're watching this on Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving. Until next time, toodaloo!